You have a session that's titled, How Big Data is Killing Your Favorite Metrics. How is data undermining established metrics? The very interesting development right now is that with a lot of very rich data and powerful algorithms for predicting, I can predict things that I wasn't able to, and sometimes they aren't what they're supposed to be. And what happened in those cases that uh, the prediction leads us astray. My example for this was the click, which is a very established metric that uh, people invented at the birth of advertising in the internet as a way of tracking whether their campaigns were successful, whether they were reaching the right audience. So what would you expect the metric to do? The whole point is you can't really measure what you're interested in, right? I mean, you can't see people buy, mm -hmm. or at least you couldn't because you didn't have e-commerce back then. So the click became a proxy. But the reality is, and you know this yourself, for every intentional click, how many accidental ones were there? Mm. Yep. And in the day and age of non-big data, it didn't matter. Because if we both are equally accidental about our clicks, but when I do mean it, I click more often, then overall the metric of higher click-through rate indicates that I'm probably more interested. What happens with big data? I can predict the accidentals. The model will be able to figure out that maybe you forgot the, your reading glasses, or you're actually right now on the flashlight app and you're fumbling in the dark. Mm -hmm. So the contextual information becomes so predictive that if I force the algorithm to optimize towards click very soon, I will only target people on the flashlight app or <laughs> who lost their reading glasses. <laughs> None of which is interested in your product. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> not much to build a business on, right? Those are not the cohorts you're necessarily looking for. Um, is there a way to know when your long used metrics need to be refined or retired? Are there warning signs that come with that? The first warning sign I would always look for if it looks too good to be true, then mm -hmm. chances are it is. So if you are able to double a metric, and we're really talking about human behavior, and people are unpredictable, and it's not that easy to manipulate them either, right? At that moment, you want to step back and say, is that really even possible? And the other point, the trick I mentioned, only works for one metric at a time. I can only make one metric look good. It's very, very hard to, at the same time, optimize click-through rate, viewability, and post-view conversion. So having a bit of a skeptical take and look at the combination of different metrics, each of those is very susceptible to be kind of over-optimized, but as a combination, it's very, very hard to do that. Interesting. How do you see data shaping metrics over the short term, over the next two years or so? On the upside, of data impacting the way we look at metrics, we can in fact measure a lot more of what's relevant. Why did we have the click? Because it was easy and we couldn't really trace the exposure to the ad to then a post-view mm -hmm. purchase. That has gotten a lot better already. So now for the most part, we are actually able to say, yes, it was that same cookie that it got exposed that now is purchasing the product we were looking for. Right. It's a lot harder for offline versus online, so ads were seen online, but the purchase happens offline. But even there, with um, cross-device linkage, where you associate, even probabilistically, you're probably the same person, and if sure. not, maybe it was your wife, but that's good enough. Sure. So data enables us to string together kind of coherent path of purchase or human behavior, and that helps, for the most part, to trace it back to things that actually aren't proxies, but the real thing you're interested in, the person buying the product, the person going to the car dealership instead of just accidentally sure. taking some action that looks as if it was relevant. So if data is undermining some of these established metrics, how do we work across the industry with metrics? And I'm thinking of just things like, you know, the old uh, battles between, you know, first it was hits, then it was page views, now it's right. uniques, but truly, there's so much nuance within each of those metrics, and now what you're suggesting is that you unpack it even further, and sometimes you don't like what you're going to find. How do we have conversations, not just within organizations, but across organizations, mm -hmm. related to just established metrics? I think the most important part is to step back and make sure we're all on the same page mm -hmm. when it comes to incentives. Right. One of the 
biggest hurdles in advertising is there are just too many siloed participants all just measure each other on the intersection on some single one metric. And only by integrating back from the brand all the way to the likes of us who deliver creatives to the consumer and having a tight integration of what do you really want to achieve? Mm -hmm. And please don't tell me CPA, but <laughs> can we actually look at data and sure. see does exposure change behavior? Because that's not even a question that we can answer today. And then embrace the modern uh, technologies to not just look at uh, panels, but going back to kind of the individual level uh, traces to be able to attribute correctly what really changed people's action, or at least probabilities thereof. Do you think that it's headed in that direction though of fundamentally asking that question of what is it you really want to achieve? It starts becoming this conversation when you get into the same room with the brand who actually wonders whether the money is well spent. Mm -hmm. So, or having the support of agencies and kind of long-standing long partnerships and themselves not being threatened by yet the newest metrics uh, on the market. And an honest conversation of how can we help you? Because often I'm at the back end of it where I'm sitting, where I just have to execute it, I know very well that I can make this metric look good, sure. but it won't do you, it would actually do you a lot of harm. And on the opposite, I could do it right, but as long as I'm measured in a way that I'm off the plan two months later because I fail on the prescribed metric, it's very hard for me to kind of maintain my moral standing and, and being in business and trying to solve the right problem. So do you anticipate that that's going to shift though? So or, I, or are people going to keep latching on to just a number for the sake of a number? I think marketing in brands is under tremendous pressure to prove their value. Because mm -hmm. there's the illusion just because you have data now, uh, everything should be easy, right? In the old days we didn't know which 50%, why can't we do it today? I think having some more level set expectations of where is the right level um, of what can be proven and what has to be intuitively agreed upon is probably right. And even if you get it right enough, I talk to agency who feel, I try all these different vendors and once one looks better and the next time the other one looks better and it's a continuous race without any converging to anything. I mean, look, you probably got the right five on the plan. Does it really matter whether they are the absolutely best five or are you already within like the top 3% and take a little bit of the pressure of this constant proving back and saying, that sounds like a sufficient good solution. Maybe sure. we can just make peace with that and focus on the bigger questions whether we are actually <laughs> really driving an impact. <laughs> Is this having any outcome? Um, what's your take on all these ad blockers that are popping up now? Uh, well, first off, my attitude is ad blocking has been around for a long it time. Has, yes. It sure is not a very new uh, development. My slightly cynical but consistent with my uh, conversation so far view is maybe we brought this upon ourselves. Part is the conversation about viewability. It used to be fine that in the middle of a TV show, it was understood that some people actually went to the restroom or got themselves a coffee, and that was fine. Not every ad was seen. Mm -hmm. The same held for print media. But now enters digital and all of a sudden everything has to be viewable and putting pressure on publishers to create sites that are so, sites that are so terrible to use that even the least tech-friendly person finally figures out how to install an ad blocker. So it comes back to are we pushing the system too hard in just a single-minded direction and lose sight of the fact that yes, as publishers and advertisers, we are responsible for the customer experience. And very little, for instance, has been thought about this in what I can see in video advertising. You see the exact same spot 20 times in a row when you're watching Hulu. <laughs> yes. Why is yes. that? Why yes. can't we better? This is not even, a, yep. it is obvious that this can't be possibly right. Comes back to a metric problem. Video is still measured, as is TV, in audience. Meaning, if you want to show it to a middle-aged soccer mom, I am a positive 20 times in a row without considering what that does to my enjoyment. Instead of thinking about, maybe I want to show her one or two and then change it up a little bit. So, mm -hmm. 
as advertisers, we also have to take responsibility for the co consumers we ultimately want to reach. It's more than just our product. It's making sure as an ecosystem we can sustain this moving forward and still allow for free content that ultimately is financed from the advertising industry. Last question for you. What people or projects are you following these days? So I'm very much interested to bring together the technology that I see is readily available and see how it could bring to bear in the nonprofit sector. And um, I'm very involved in a number of groups here in New York City. There's DataKind, and you always see Jake uh, speaking here. There are groups like um, Data and Society. There is Data Pop working with Rockefeller and uh, MIT. What I find interesting is kind of a slight separation between these different perspectives. And I would like to be a facilitator in the conversations and bring them together. And maybe because or despite the fact that I work for advertising, bring some of the views to bear to those applications, what we have learned works and what maybe we shouldn't be trying to do. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. My pleasure.